This video is for ELEC 1510 Logic Design. This is Lecture 16, Part 2 on State Machine Circuit Design using D flip-flops. This corresponds to the textbooks, Section 5.7. In State Machine Design, every state bit represents a flip-flop output. As we discussed in the previous video, States can be represented by 1 bit or 2 bits or 3 bits or however many bits you need to represent how many states there are. One state bit can represent two states, two state bits can represent four states, three state bits can represent eight states, and so on. These represent flip-flop outputs as well because they're represented by variables which are the output variables from the flip-flops. Therefore, we would say that the current state of a flip-flop is q of t, the next state is q of t plus 1. We want to formulate for each next state a function. Those functions for q sub i of t plus 1, the sub i because we will have multiple flip-flops in any given state machine, is going to be a function of the inputs and the current states. For D flip-flops, which we're going to use in the design given here, now this says positive edge D flip-flop, we could have negative edge D flip-flops as well. That just influences the clock. The clock isn't important in state machine design. For a D flip-flop, when D of T is 0, Q of T plus 1 is also 0. When D of T is 1, Q of T plus 1 is also 1. D of T is going to be formed using a combinational circuit as a function of the inputs and Q of T. So basically, D of T and Q of T plus 1 are equivalent for D flip-flops. Here's the state diagram and the state table from the simple example in the previous video. In this state machine, we have states 0 and 1 represented by a single variable. That variable is A. We have a single input, X. And then the next state is the same variable as the current state, A. So we formulated the state table in the previous video. The next state is only ever 1 when the current state is 0 and the input, X, is a 1. That means that if we call the next state A, Q of T plus 1, and the current state is Q of T, if we think of it that way, then Q of T plus 1 would be equal to X and Q prime of T. So now, when we actually draw the state machine circuit, we have our D flip-flop with inputs D output Q, which is basically the state A. We also have a clock. You can choose to draw the clock or not. That is somewhat separate from the actual state machine design. We'll, we will draw it here. And then the input D is what governs the next state. As we had derived here, Q of T plus 1, which from the D flip-flop slide, Q of T plus 1 is equivalent to D of T. So in this diagram, D will be Q of T plus 1. That was given by the equation X and Q prime of T. So we need an AND gate. Q is here. That gets inverted for Q prime. And then X is an input to the AND gate. And so there is the design of our simple state machine that implements this state table and state diagram. Let's do another example of designing a state machine circuit using the state diagram and state table using one of the other examples from the previous video. 
This state diagram only has one state variable, A, so it has two states, 0 and 1, but it has two inputs, x and y. We had derived the state table including the next states for all sets of current states and inputs. Now I'm going to be a little bit more explicit about just writing what the single D input has to be on the state table. With a single state variable, we only need one flip-flop in the state machine, so I will call the input d sub a to that flip-flop, because d is the input. Now d sub a is always equal to the next state, so I can just take the next state for that flip-flop, and d a is just equal to that. This seems pretty self-explanatory, but this will be much more helpful when we move on to design using j, k, and t flip-flops. So now we can just derive a function for d sub a for that flip-flop and forget about the next state, even though they were equivalent, because it's a little more explicit to just derive d sub a and then plug that function in. The k map for d sub a in terms of a, x, and y is going to look like this. So for a and x being 0 and y being 0, d sub a is 0. So we can just move through the min terms then. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1. All right, we've got a checkerboard pattern on this k-map, which means that the expression for d sub a comes out to be a exclusive or x exclusive or y. All right, so in our state machine, we have our single flip-flop here with input d. We could call this d sub a if we wanted to. The output Q is A, the state. We've got a clock. And as we just derived, the input to D sub A is A exclusive or X exclusive or Y. So we need a single exclusive or function for a, and then another exclusive OR function for X and Y, which is input to the uh, first exclusive OR gate there. So X and Y, as the inputs, go into that gate. And there we've designed another state machine, this one with two inputs, but only still a single state output.